let's talk about DNFing books. So I never used to DNF books, like ever. If I picked up a book, then I would have to finish it, even if it took me two years to finish it. I would put it down and pick it back up at some point, and eventually it would get done. I'm trying not to do that anymore. It just seems so pointless and like such a waste of time. At a certain point, you know whether you like the book or not. I find that when I don't hear enough in book and I try to push my way through it, it ends up putting me in a reading slump because I'm just dragging myself page by page through it. So there are some books that I'm glad I stuck through that I maybe didn't like at the beginning but ended up liking near the end. But still, overall, if I didn't like the book by 50% of the way through, I'm probably not going to like it by the end. So from now on, I'm trying to DNF. I'm going to talk about the books so far in the last year that I have DNF'd and whether or not I'm going to pick them back up again. Because sometimes it isn't that I don't like the book, it just fell by the wayside for whatever reason. So the first book I DNF'd last year was The Passage by Justin Cronin. The Passage is sort of a vampire tale in a way. It has to do with the government and this experiment they're running on, I want to say convicts? But I might be mixing that up with a Stephen King novel. I can't remember. But I think it's an... Oh! Okay. <laughs> but I believe it's an experiment they were running on convicts. They have these 12 people, they've injected them with something, and they're watching what happens. These people pretty much end up turning into vampires. And they end up escaping from the building where they're being held, and things kind of escalate from there. Now, even though that is the overarching story in this trilogy, there is smaller stories within the book itself. The first third of the book follows this FBI agent who's been told that he has to go get this little girl and take her back to this government, whatever. He doesn't know what they're going to do with her, he just knows that he has to go get her. But eventually he starts to realize that maybe their reasoning isn't the best, so he kind of goes on the run with her trying to protect her. I actually started reading this about a year ago and I was actually really, really enjoying it. But I didn't know that the first book was like three different separate stories. So I was really into the first third of this book about this FBI agent and this little girl on the run. I was so into this. But then all of a sudden it shifted to part two and part two takes place like a thousand years later and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What just happened? <laughs> I did start to read part two and I actually got invested in it pretty quickly. It was, like I said, it took place a huge time jump later and it was like, it was basically them dealing with this like post-apocalyptic setting that the world has now turned to because of these vampire things. And it was really interesting. But I just like, <laughs> I was still missing the first part and I don't know, I just ended up putting the book down and never picking it back up, but this is not a permanent DNF. I know I will pick this back up because I was really enjoying it. I just, it's like 900 pages and I got so mad <laughs> at the fact that it was switching to a new story that I had to put it down. But I will pick it back up at some point. I'll probably have to restart from like part two because I do remember part one very well, but I'll probably re have to restart at the second part. Now, the second book that I DNF'd last year, actually around the same time as The Passage, was The Handmaid's Tale. I'm sure most everybody knows what this is about. Was, once again, I was actually really enjoying this book. I just put it down and never picked it back up. I liked it a lot. I liked the writing a lot. And I think it was just that I was getting kind of sad because it's a very heavy book and I think it like wasn't the best time to be reading it, so I put it down, but I will pick it back up at some point. I really want to watch the show and I haven't because I've been wanting to read the book first so it needs to get done. At the very least I should read the graphic novel version because holy crap. The next book I DNF'd was Panic by Lauren Oliver, I'm pretty sure. This is a YA book about these kids who compete in this game called Panic. Basically they are forced to do these like huge crazy ass dares and if they panic then they're eliminated. And whoever gets to the end wins a certain amount of money because I think they all like put money into this pot. I can't really remember. I was listening to this on audiobook and I liked it but like I wasn't in love with it. I wasn't dying to get to the end. It was fine. And that was it. And this is one of the ones where I'm just like, should I finish it? I've heard everyone pretty much say about this book that like it's better than they expected but that's kind of like 
a backhanded compliment. Like, it wasn't as shitty as I expected, so that's great. But, like, if it's not actually good, why am I finishing it? So I think this one might be a permanent DNF unless someone tries to convince me otherwise. The next book I DNF'd was Wild by Portia Bright. This is a motorcycle romance, and it was just kind of boring. Basically this girl is away at school and all of a sudden she gets attacked by someone and and it turns out that the person who attacked her is from a motorcycle gang and she's attacked because her dad is the head of a different motorcycle gang. Anyway, she's estranged from her home and her dad and she goes back home to kind of figure out what's going on, to get protection, etc. And she ends up like falling for this guy from her childhood who also happens to be her dad's like second in command. I didn't hate this book. Like, this is not a bad book by any means. My issue is that I'm just not into romance. I enjoy dark romance, I enjoy hella smutty shit, but like other than that, I'm just not into romantic things. I find them boring. It doesn't... there's nothing that propels me forward in the story because I just don't care. <laughs> Part of the story also involved her trying to work through her issues with her father. She finds out he has cancer and he's dying, and that part of the story I thought was written really well. There were just certain lines that like hit me as someone who had a parent die of cancer. It just was like, oof, yes, like it hit me emotionally. But that was it, like, and that part of, of the story was kind of contained to the beginning and then like there was nothing else that I cared about in the story. But like if you like motorcycle romances, I think this book is fine. It's just not for me. So this will be a permanent DNF. I finished 60% of it but I just know that like I don't care to finish the rest. The next book I DNF'd was Rival by Penelope Douglas. I read Bully, which was the first book in this Fallaway series, and it was really good. I actually enjoyed it. It's probably one of the Penelope Douglas books I enjoyed the most because I really loved the female character in that story. Rival is the second book in that series, and it's about a stepbrother and stepsister who had feelings for each other and they hooked up once but then she was sent away to like boarding school or something now she's back and they're hooking up again and they have like this you know bickery back and forth sort of relationship and i honestly was actually really excited for this it was the one i wanted to read more i actually wasn't that excited about the first book in the series but i was reading it so i could get to this one and it turns out i just didn't like this one at all i was so bored I didn't care about their relationship at all. I felt like the writing was so bad. And like, the thing about Penelope Douglas is I never connect to her books. I just, for whatever reason, they don't work for me. But I've never thought, oh, she's a bad writer. Like, sh she's very clearly a good writer. But in this book, it just, it was bad. Like, the writing was not good. It felt like a step down from Bully, which was so weird because Billy, Bully was obviously written first. So, it, like, I really just didn't see a point in trying to get through it. I read about 30% of it on ebook and then I listened to another 20% on audiobook and even with audiobook I was like this is not worth getting through. <laughs> a lot of the things they were doing just seemed really immature and their backstory I really wasn't interested in because it used a trope that I just don't like and overall I was like this is just not worth my time. <laughs> so this one is definitely a permanent DNF. The next book that I didn't finish was Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Townsend? I don't know. I actually don't know who wrote this. Okay. This is kind of an Agatha Christie type mystery, but with a Freaky Friday, Groundhog Day sort of twist. The main character keeps waking up in different people's bodies and getting a different perspective on the day's events and having to relive through those days over and over again and figure out who the killer is. I actually really, really loved this book, but for some reason I only got to 28%. And I know why that reason is, it's because the book and the writing is very dense. You have to pay attention to what's happening at all times, and that's not something I'm great at. I tend to do a lot of my reading at night. I climb into bed and I'll take a sleeping pill and then somehow I end up reading for like three or four hours. But like, being drugged up with a sleeping pill is not the best time to read this book because you need to pay attention. And I just felt like I didn't want to rush the greatness that is this book while falling asleep, if that makes sense. So I'm absolutely gonna pick up this book again. I just don't know when. I might get the physical form and then read it like in the bath and stuff because that's where I tend to read most of my physical books, whereas I was reading this on ebook at night. 
The next book I DNF'd was The Bandit by B.B. Reed. So B.B. Reed wrote one of my favorite smut books of all time called Fear Me. It is, it is one of the darkest dark romance books I've ever read, but I absolutely loved it and it was one of the first books that made me realize how much I love dark romance and like non-con, so I thought I should go read some of her other work. So I picked up The Bandit. It's about a girl who kind of gets kidnapped by these guys because they think she has this ledger of theirs because her dad was like in this criminal enterprise with them. So that was all good and fine. The thing that I don't like is that they also like kidnapped her baby and I don't like children. <laughs> And I don't like stories about children. I don't like TV shows involving children. Like, that's just it. I don't find it sexy. I don't want it in my smut book. Like, just please no. <laughs> so that was just kind of a turnoff, and I just wasn't enjoying the book overall. I felt like Fear Me was a lot better written. I think The Bandit was her first book she ever wrote. I could be totally wrong, but yeah, I just wasn't into it, and I was like, why am I forcing myself through this? Especially when it was it was just so generic and like so many other books I've read, just like generic plus baby, so that was like two strikes against it. So I DNF'd it and I will not be picking it up again. The next book I DNF'd was Kill Me Softly by Sarah Cross. I don't know what to say about this book because even now I have no fucking idea what it was about. I know it had to do with fairy tales and like, you know, fairy tales in the real world and their YA characters. That's all I got. I was listening to this book on audiobook and I felt like I'd been listening to it forever. Like I was like, oh my god, I've probably listened to like 40 hours of this by now. And then I looked at the book and I had listened to 15% of it. <laughs> and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I did not enjoy anything about this book. I can tell you right now too, I have no idea what was happening at any given point. I had no idea what anybody's relationships were to each other or how they were connected. I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea what it had to do with fairy tales, I just, I wasn't enjoying it at all. Anytime I was listening to it, I could feel my mind wandering and thinking about something else, and then when I would snap back, I'd be like, wait, what's happening? And I, overall, I just didn't care to find out, so I, th this is most definitely a permanent DNF. This is the most DNF'd of all the DNFs. The next book I DNF'd was Raw by Belle Aurora. I've been hearing about this book for so long, like, I feel like when I first started reading Dark Romance, this is the one that was always recommended, and I finally decided to pick it up. I read about 20% of this the night I picked it up, and then I immediately put it back down and was like, eh, I'm over this. I don't totally even remember what it was about. I just remember that, I believe what happened was this girl almost got attacked by somebody, and then this other guy swooped in and saved her. And then, like, he just kept breaking into her apartment and spending the night. And I think that was it. Like, that, that was all I remembered. But every time they spoke to each other, I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, every piece of dialogue just seemed so weird that I was like, you know what? This is not worth my time right now. There are so many other books I'd rather be reading. And I'm kind of at that point, especially with Dark Romance and Smut, where my initial gut reaction is what I go with. And then the last book I DNF'd was Four Psychopaths, which I picked this book up when I was looking for some reverse harem books because I don't know a lot about the genre and I read one that I really liked and so I wanted to try more things in that vein. This was about a girl who's dead but kind of in limbo, like she's stuck just as a ghost kind of watching these four boys and I didn't really, I don't really know much beyond that. She really wants to have sex with them. At first, I was enjoying this because it's very, like, sarcastic and witty and it jokes around a lot. It doesn't take itself too seriously. But the longer I was reading the book, the more that actually got on my nerves because it was, it just started to get really cheesy and dumb and I just couldn't take it seriously. Not that, like, it was supposed to be taken seriously, but... I, it, I just found the way that it talked about anything really grating after a while, so I didn't get very far in this book. I didn't even get to a sex scene because I was just like, this is so silly, so I'm moving on to something else. Most recent book I've DNF'd is The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. 
This actually, I find, is very similar to Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, where the text just felt so dense. Like, all of the chapters were like 30 pages long, and there was almost no dialogue. It was just a block of text, and I just found my brain like was not making its way through this text very well. I might try this again at some point. But for now, I'm DNF'd at 15% because, yeah, I didn't get very far into it. I did like the first few chapters I read, but I just don't know if I'm up to the task of reading this. Fantasy is not my thing, and so it's, like, really hard to get my brain around it. So those are the books I DNF'd. Hopefully it's just making room for more books I'll actually enjoy. I hope you like this video, and I hope you'll come back again soon. Bye.